G'day ladies and gents, Cubic Media here. Wither Tech is growing, and we even have a whole new archive for it. Go ahead and check it out down in the description. In this video, I'm going to introduce a piece of tech that could be revolutionary for Wither Cages. The idea came about when I was trying to find ways in which to increase yields from my obsidian end pillar farm. Be sure to check out that video for our crazy obsidian farm concept. By default, a Wither is exactly three and a half blocks tall, and will break four blocks around it in a column like so. And just to prove my point, here we have a wither which is currently being frozen. I can place a top slab just above its head like so. Now what I was trying to do is realign the wither on blocks such as soul sand like so in order to try and make the wither break five blocks in a column. But when I did this, something very interesting happened. If I now damage the wither, notice how it just broke the soul sand underneath it, but did not affect the slab. If I placed back the obsidian, and then damage the wither, now it breaks the space where the slab was. So what a wither is actually doing, is when it takes damage, it's actually tracking down to the next lowest block, and breaking one, two, three, four blocks and leaving the block above its head intact. But then of course the problem here is that when we damage the wither it's breaking the soul sand which is our supporting block. If our wither is exactly three and a half blocks tall then maybe it's possible to get a block with a hitbox slightly lower than half a block. And suddenly we have a concept for a wither cage which does not need bedrock and does not require boats. All you need is some soul sand, then you go one, two, three, place down a lightning rod, surround it with some blocks, and then on this too high soul sand, we build the wither right here, and then we waterlog our lightning rod. And this creates a super simple wither cage. However, the instant we try to damage our wither, it removes the supporting block and then falls to the ground. What we need to do is keep the wither flying up right against this lightning rod. And naturally the way that we can do that is by giving our wither a target to shoot at. And of course we're taking advantage of the wither's AI, which compels our wither to try and fly above its target. Our wither is always trying to obtain the high ground. And of course what this means is that we have a perfectly stable wither cage. And as for our wither skulls, all we need to do is redirect them into a target that we can regenerate, such as this cobblestone wall. And here's the real beauty of this wither cage. It turns out you can actually use this to move the wither around. However, this layout for our movable wither cage is quite badly optimized at this stage. For example, moving it up and down, there is a chance that the machine pushes itself in front of a wither skull and explodes. However, with a few optimizations, such as using trap doors to make sure that they don't collide with the skulls while they're moving, allowing you to move side to side, up and down, and even backwards and forwards without even needing any blocks behind the wither to push it forwards. Now, not much can be said about the reliability of this setup, as some weird angles can still break the cage. For example, I tried to use it for this really weird approach for a dark oak tree farm to collect saplings. And as you can see, having too many withers in the one place can cause a few issues. But who knows what a movable wither cage could be useful for. Perhaps somebody could make an unstoppable wither quarry or tunnel bore that isn't phased by blast resistant blocks such as obsidian. But then you still have the issue of requiring the wither to have a target to actively shoot at in order to use this in any sort of machine. I can imagine the technical challenge of moving not only the wither, but these bubble columns, as well as the iron golem, and the target for the skulls to hit. This would all be an extreme technical challenge, especially given if you try to move the target while a skull is hitting it, the blast resistance will drop to zero and break immediately. One potential solution to this problem is to use something like an indestructible end crystal 
which are quite easy to move while being able to absorb the hits of the Wither Skulls. But then you have the caveat of indestructible end crystals being very difficult to obtain. So to be perfectly honest, this looks like a problem for people who are much better than Slimestone than me. Alright, so what is a cool machine that we can make with this new Wither Cage? Well, it turns out that with a movable Wither Cage, you can solve a really annoying issue with platform-based obsidian farms. So as you can see, I'm currently in survival. If I go through this end portal, I'm suddenly surrounded by Withers. However, they are not attacking me. This is, of course, because our Withers have been retracted into the ceiling where they cannot have line of sight of the player when they enter the dimension. This is an end platform obsidian farm that is capable of producing 120,000 obsidian per hour. Turning the farm on is a little bit of a complex process, so let's step through it. To begin with, our withers are retracted into the ceiling. It is possible for bad things to happen if you, for example, were to hit a wither, However, this would not catastrophically break the cage. Before we can lower our withers into the platform and start farming obsidian, we first need to break these blocks directly underneath our withers, because part of their hitbox has to go inside of the platform, and they cannot go into the platform if the platform is there. And this system has an automated failsafe that will not allow you to lower the withers while the platform is present. So if you go ahead and break this block, we have now disabled the failsafe and we can go ahead and lower our withers into the platform. Now here's the tricky problem. In order to turn the farm on from here, we actually need to send a signal all the way to the end portal in the overworld. Because right now, if we were to leave the area and go to the overworld in order to turn the farm on, when we come back to the end, when we load the chunks, our withers will target us if we're in survival. One solution is that if you're on a multiplayer server, you can always get your mate to switch on the overworld side. Or we can use some redstone trickery to send a wireless signal all the way to the end portal in the overworld with simply the press of this button. There we go, now we have the platform being generated and obsidian is being farmed at roughly 120,000 obsidian blocks per hour. As a failsafe, while the end platform is being generated, the system will lock out the ability to retract the withers into the roof. I've also included a storage system which will load all the obsidian into shulker boxes. So while the farm is running, I won't be able to switch it off. Instead, I'll need to signal the overworld again to tell the platform to stop being generated. And now the withers will retract into the ceiling. And with our withers tucked away nice and safe, players are free to move in and out of the end without any risk of being blasted to death by withers. Alright, now you know how to use the farm. You know how to set it up as well. One of the kind of awkward tasks is to set up this floor of hopper minecarts such that all the obsidian gets collected reliably. You want to go ahead and place down a bunch of unpowered rails like so and make sure that all the hopper carts are placed down fast enough such that they occupy a block each so that no obsidian gets left behind. And now when you go back into the end the obsidian platform will replace all of those rails. And be sure to re-enable our platform failsafe. Constructing the withers is quite straightforward. All you need to do is pile up some soul sand in these four locations and build up our withers one at a time, like so. Place down the water bucket and then make sure we hide from the wither. Once the wither is formed, we can go in, remove the water bucket and move on to the next wither. Once all the withers are in place, you want to make sure you remove all this soul sand without hitting the withers. Then you can go ahead and remove those blocks in the platform. And now the withers can be lowered and raised at will. Now if you're in single player and don't have access to any other players who can turn on the overworld side, you will need to build this signaling system to the overworld. All we do here is simply dispense an item into the end portal 
and this item will land at a particular block in your spawn. To convert that item coming from the end dimension into a signal, all we need is a simple item filter and then we collect the signal from it. Now because it's unlikely that you'll find an end portal inside of your spawn chunks, you will need to build this wireless redstone system. Yes, this is a wireless redstone transmitter. I'm going to go into a lot more detail about these in a later video, so I'll save the details for then. But pretty much all this will do is take the signal from our item filter, putting the machine into a specific state, and it will not flip back to the off state until it has confirmed that it has transmitted the signal to the receiver, which is somewhere in our world next to our end portal frame. Fortunately, I prepared a simple command block right here to take us straight to where the end portal is. At our end portal, we have this super simple portal based chunk loader, keeping the chunks loaded constantly, as well as our wireless redstone receiver. In order to generate the end platform, we we'll use this concept designed by Scorpio, which you can find in the WitherTech Discord. What you'll find, however, is that my variation of the concept does not require you to break the end portal frames. We've simply got four snow golems and four targets for our snow golems, which have been perfectly aligned such that this snow golem will target the zombie in the opposite corner from it. We also offset the firing sequence of our snow golems, which causes our end platform to generate four times every 20 game ticks. And what we get is each one of our four withers breaking an entire 3x3 square of obsidian every 20 game ticks, producing almost 130,000 obsidian per hour. For reference, Wavetech's absolutely bonkers 600,000 per hour obsidian farm only produces six times more than that using 13 times the amount of withers. Now if you ask me, given the absurd simplicity of this particular farm in comparison, I'd say that's a good deal. If you wanted to play around this farm yourself, I'll be leaving a world download down in the description. And let me know if you want a full build tutorial on this particular farm. Although, with the Shocker Farm build event planned for this weekend, that video might have to wait. Thank you all very much for watching and I will see you next time.